I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my turn Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my turn Till I met you Oh, you called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious My soul And your freedom Is all That I know Oh the old man knew Jesus when I met you Oh you call my name And I I know you make a way I don't always understand I don't always get to see But I will believe it Yes, I will believe it You make mountains move You 
cosmic giants fall You use songs of praise To shake prison walls I will speak to my fear I will preach to my doubt That you were faithful then You'll be faithful now I am standing on your word Calling heaven down to earth You will fight my enemies This will end in victory I will believe it Yes, I will believe it But you make mountains move You make giants fall You use songs of praise To shake prison walls I will speak to my fear I will preach to my doubt But you were faithful then You'll be faithful giants fall you use songs of praise to shake prison walls I will speak to my fear I will preach to my doubt you were faithful then you'll be faithful now cause you make mountains move you make giants fall Songs of praise to shake prison walls. I will speak to my fear, I will preach to my doubt. But you were faithful then, you'll be faithful now. You were faithful then, you'll be faithful. You know, we're, we're here at Living Room Worship, and uh, my name's Trevor. If you've never joined us, this is David. Uh, something about that song uh, that inspires me is how the writer, and as we sing, it's, it's teaching us how to speak to things that come up against us that are internal. Yeah. You know, our doubts, our fears, and what we're doing is we're focusing on uh, the faithfulness of God to give us the words to say against our doubts and against our fears. And uh, David and I have have talked a lot over the past few months. Um, he even let me uh, stay at his house for a little bit there, which was awesome. Yeah. And uh, so thank you yeah. and Ashley for that. And Joe, this beautiful little girl named Jojo. Um, Joanna is her real name, but we call her Jojo. And what I've loved about spending time with you is that we've built friendship. Mm. You know, we've yeah. built a genuine and real relationship. And when you know somebody in a real way, you know how they're going to come through for you. Yeah. You know the sound of their, yes, you know the sound of their voice, but you know the sound of the statements they're going to make. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and what I mean by that is the closer you get to somebody, you can get to a point where you know how they're going to respond mostly, you know, without needing to know their exact answer. And I love that because when we know the faith um, that we have in Jesus, and it's very real, and we have this amazing relationship with him, we don't need to know exactly the word order that he's going to speak 
to our fears and speak to our doubt and speak to how he's going to come through, we can just know his character. It's going to give us a glimpse yeah. and understanding of how he is going to come through. You know, I may not know exactly when or where he's going to come through for me. But I know his character enough and I have a close enough relationship with him to know mm. that he's going to come through. Uh, David, how have you seen over this past few months God come through for you? Yeah. Well, you know, it's, um, I don't know if it's just one way, uh, but, you know, even, you know, if, if you take just the, the, the circumstance that we're living in right now right. As, as a nation and sure. just with COVID and everything, um, you know, there were moments in the beginning of all this, especially when we couldn't meet on Sundays, you know, just me personally, it's like, you know, Lord, will, will we ever meet again? Uh, like, what is this going to look like at the end of all this? You know, um, are so you, doubt, are you yeah, be, just, yeah, yeah, just immediate, just very doubt. real doubt, you know, and I, I think, uh, there's a place and it's okay to be honest with the Lord and ask questions like that. Not be afraid be, because if you do have a relationship with him, then he's willing to take your conversation like that. But, you know, I've, I found myself, like, at a crossroads where you have to choose, you know, are you going to live in that doubt? Yeah. Or are you going to remind yourself that the, that God has always been faithful? Right. And he'll continue to be faithful. It's not like he just got knocked off of his chair and he's trying to recover. Like, he's always in right. control. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's how you preach to yourself. And, you know, Ashley and I uh, have been through a lot like together as a family to, you know, you just talked about Jojo. Uh, you know, it was actually very hard to uh, get pregnant with jo Joanna. And during the pregnancy, there was actually a lot of difficulty where we thought we were going to lose her. And I remember in the same circumstance, I was asking the same question, Lord, are you going to come through? And I found myself at a crossroads. Am I going to live in the doubt or am I going to be confident that the Lord has always been faithful yeah. and will continue to be faithful no matter what he chooses to lead me through. Yeah. And it's your, and it's you walking with him mm -hmm. for a long time yeah. that got you to that point yeah. of saying, you know what? He's not failed me. He's yeah. not going to fail me. I know he's faithful when I'm not faithful. Mm -hmm. I know he comes through when I can't come through. Yeah. I know he's in control and I'm actually not. Yeah. You know, I find personally, it very rarely feels better immediately yeah. when I choose to trust. Wow. Uh, choosing to trust doesn't mean that the feeling of fear is going to go away. It just means that you trust the one who's leading you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's like admitting and acknowledging or accepting the fact that the Lord wants to stretch you. Wow. He wants to stretch your faith. And so preaching yourself doesn't mean it's, it's, it's not like this magic formula of like, okay, I feel better now. Although with trust comes gradual, like, you know, you'll get to that place where you have peace. Yeah. But we can't let our heart rule our soul. Yeah. You know, the yeah. soul is in charge and you've got to speak to your heart. Yeah. Because it, it, it'll deceive you, you know. That's good. But if the Lord is going to be faithful... He, if he has been faithful, and he has, he'll continue to be. Yeah. You got to keep preaching that to yourself. And we got to keep preaching because we got to keep growing. Yeah. We've got to keep growing because as we go further in relationship, our relationship with him has to keep growing or it stops going anywhere. And if you don't keep growing in your relationship with the Lord, if we don't keep growing in our relationships with each other, if we don't keep growing with love and excitement and expectation, the relationship doesn't go anywhere. That's right. And it gets stagnant. And actually, um, you're either moving forward or backward. There is no in-between. And so your, your relationship with the Lord is either growing and going somewhere or it's not going anywhere and it's actually retreating and actually, you're actually getting further and further away from the Lord because that's how relationships are. And so to be able to speak to yourself in the middle of those moments, in the middle of those really dark times and dark uh, emotional days where, there, where it feels like it's always raining. You know, like just, why does it always feel like it's raining when bad things are happening? I just, <laughs> I'm like, what, what is happening right now? And I'm oversensitive to things sometimes. When I'm speaking negatively to myself and to other people, I, I feel like 
I probably haven't spent time with the Lord that day. Mm-hmm. Or maybe I look at my life and I probably haven't spent time with him in a while. Or you know what? I've opened up his Bible and I've been to church and I haven't actually spent any genuine time with him. Mm-hmm. You know, I get to a point where it's like, oh, you've been to church a lot late, Tre- late Trevor. Well, that's cool. When was the last time you went to church with Jesus? You know, like, and you actually spent time with him. And you actually prayed something that was a powerful prayer, not something that was just regurgitation of what you you think you should say. Or what someone else said, you know? Mm -hmm. See, there's this moment uh, where Paul in the New Testament is writing to the church at Philippi. It's really cool um, because as he's writing in Philippians to this church, he says some amazing things. And on the front end, he's very bold and he's very upfront. He says, my name's Paul. I'm all about Jesus. You know who I am. That's awesome. Well, here's what I'm going to, here's what I want for you. I'm going to pray for you. And he prays this amazing prayer of thanksgiving. And then he gets to this point that says, okay, now, now that I'm, you, know, you realize that I'm, I'm really joyful for you, I'm really thankful for you, you got a lot going on, he says this. He says, uh, now this is what I'm praying for you. I want you to listen to this. Verse 9. So the Philippians 1, verse 9. It says, I pray that your love will overflow more and more, and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. Verse 9, literally, is what Paul is praying for this church. But what if we could pray that for each other, for ourselves, for our family, and for our church, for Concord? For what God is doing here, both in person and online and all across this world, from the GO conference, from, from all of the things that we do, from BSG on Sunday to BSG throughout the week to just time we spend with each other that feels like an acquaintance. Actually, God's in control, and there's no such thing as acquaintance, right? He's, he's, he's orchestrating this thing, so it's time for us to see our life as the way he sees it, and that everything is an opportunity uh, to grow. But what if our love grew and overflowed more and more and more. And that led us to knowledge and understanding as we keep growing. I want to invite you to this thought as we worship, as we go throughout our lives. Stop thinking you've made it. Because whenever you think you've made it, you aren't making anything of your life. Because you've stopped. So what if making it was making something of our life all day, every day with the Lord. I've made it because I'm walking with God. I'm moving with Him. I'm going somewhere with Him. I've made it when I realize that there's no such thing as making it. It's just making my life with God. You know, Trevor, I got. I have a friend who says something that I, is right in line with what you're saying. He says, in relationships, you never drift your way towards awesome. I love that. And you, it's exactly what you're talking about. Like if, you, if you're if you just stagnant, if you're not doing anything, you're going to drift away from that person. Yeah, that's it. Relationships have to be an active journey every day. Yeah. And in the middle of this, something that I wish is for myself, for my family, for us, for our friends, for this church, is that we would stop putting up boundaries mm. and limitations yeah. on our love. Because in this... He's praying that, that our love would overflow more and more and more That's and right. it would never stop. And that is a direct marker, I believe, of us going further on our relationship with Jesus. So what if we stopped putting up limitations to us loving each other? You know what? I've loved them enough. You know, like, I've been nice enough to them. But it doesn't say, he doesn't say I'm praying that you'll love someone equally to how they love you in return. No, he just says love them with an over and abundance, an overflowing of love and keep growing in knowledge and understanding. And I believe one of the ways for us to keep understanding more and more about Jesus and who he is and his character and how he's gonna pull through for us is when we love like he loves. Mm. Not dependent on what the other person does, not dependent on what the other person says, not dependent on how the other person returns the love. And No, he doesn't say love them based on how they return love. He just says, let's live overflow. Mm. There's an overflow for us when we stop living in boundary. And then to kind of close this thought as, as we really go into another powerful moment of worship and saying, you know what, let's pray for this for, for each other. He goes into verse 10. He says this, for I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. 
I love this. These two words right here before he gets to this last part. It says, so that you, so these three words really, you may live. He says this and he prays this for us so that we'll may, we may live. And I think truly living is living in right relationship with Jesus. Because when we live in right relationship with him, when we live with him close to us, when we live in his presence, we experience him all day, every day. And we're exactly where we were made to be. See, when you live in right relationship with Jesus, you are exactly where you are made to be. And that's truly living. We were made to live with Jesus in the overflow of love, knowing him more and more with complete understanding until the day of Christ's return. So don't worry about when he's going to return. Just, just know this, you're with him today. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and let's worship like that. Let's pray that for each other. And uh, Paul's praying that for this church of Philippi. What if we prayed that for our church? Yeah. So I want to invite you to, to pray with me for this church, for Concord, for what God is doing here. And then let's worship with all that we have as we worship together in living room worship, as we worship together when we're, when we're listening and we're studying together, as we're worshiping together on Sundays or whenever we're joining in and watching live. We're not just watching, we're participating in what God is doing here. So let's pray. God, I pray that you would move in my life. God, I pray that you would move in David's life. God, I pray that you would, whether anyone is watching this or not, God, I pray that we would experience you in such a way that it inspires and encourages other people around us from the people that we get to work with, from the people that we get to see, and everyone in this room, and everyone joining us online and watching this and joining in, and not just looking with their eyes, but participating with their souls, as David was saying, and speaking to those doubts, and speaking to those fears, and speaking to those misunderstandings. God, I pray that we would step in as a church into the overflow of loving each other the way that you love us, and let that go. Let us go further in relationship with you and know that that is truly living. When we're going through life with you, we were made to do that. So let us do that together and individually and with our families and friends. God, move in our life no matter where we are. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. an altar of broken stones but you delight in the offering you have the heavens to call your own but you abide in the song we sing ten thousand angels surround your Bring you praise that will never cease. But hallelujah from here below is still your favorite melody. Oh, we sing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And you the fire that once burned bright. Come in ember, my eyes can't see. I will remember your sacrifice. I will abide in your love for me. Oh, we sing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
Praise your name. Lord, I thank you for this time. I thank you for those who are watching. Lord, encourage them this day to continue to press in to what it means to be in true relationship with you. To truly walk in the way that you've called them to live. And to trust that you are who you say you are and that you'll do what you've said that you would do. But that's the kind of God you are. You're always faithful. You're always there. Always willing to forgive in every circumstance because Jesus has paid it all paid it all for us. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness towards us. And we love you. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, again, we do this every week, Sundays and Wednesdays at 6:30. Invite your friends to join us and hit share if you haven't already. We'll see you next time. <laughs>